October. Our mantra for October, my mantra, you can take or leave as much as you wish of it, is uh, be imperfect. And this is inspired by Brene Brown's The Gifts of Imperfection. So if you're really into it, grab the 10th anniversary edition, or you can, if you have the old one, great too. And uh, read it this month, and I think it'll, it'll bring a little bit more into each practice. Um, I'm going to open with these words from Brene that are in the, the introduction, and it's the definition of authenticity that she uses for herself, and uh, I embrace as well. She says, may we find the courage to let go of who we think we're supposed to be so that we can fully embrace our authentic selves the imperfect, the creative, the vulnerable, the powerful, the broken, and the beautiful. May we show ourselves and others the compassion that comes from knowing that we are all made of strength and struggle. May we create a just and equitable world where privilege isn't a prerequisite for self-expression and authenticity where everyone feels invited and safe to express their power and their vulnerability. And last, may we experience the strength of connection, the love of belonging, and the grace of pure joy. So good. Let that settle in with you. The yoga hour sequence from my workbook is uh, from Mackie Osborne. Mackie uh, and I have spent some training time together. She's really quirky and fun. She wears her hair in these little Princess Leia buns at all times and exudes a lot of uh, joy to me. Close your eyes. Take in the breath. And yet, Mackie is very much to me a yin and a yang in that uh, her smile is infectious, her fun spirit is infectious. And she is also forever kind of a goth girl. You see her in all black and black lipstick and all the things at all times. And I love that these two things exist simultaneously within her as they do within all of us. And let's practice both on the yoga mat today. Not the chin down to your chest and the intention to be imperfect. And then as you open the eyes, reach the arms up to the sky, open your eyes. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Interlace the fingers, flip the palms, and then look straight ahead rather than down, or rather than up, and twist a little bit to one side, and then twist a little bit to the other. As you come back to the center, release the hands, and come on over to all fours. In all fours, immediately turn your hands around. So whether you're turning your hands out to the side or all the way back here, really good stretch in the forearms. Sway a little bit back and forth. Grip the earth underneath the finger pads themselves. And then round the back a bit like cat pose. So south paw cat. Pose. Back to a neutral spine, carefully turn the hands around and stretch up and back to downward facing dog. Big full stretch there. As you are in downward facing dog, feel free to pedal it out. Do all the things that help to open and set yourself well for practice. Mm. 
Inhale, come forward to plank. Do a push up, down, up, and go back to downward facing dog. And then do that four more times. Forward to plank, down and up, down dog. Each time in the push up, try to find your full range of motion, whether that's using toes or knees in the legs. Everybody's full range is different, so your chest might be right close to the mat each time you're in your low point, or it might stay a little further up. And then come forward to plank and lie flat down onto the belly. Interlace your hands behind the back. Lift everything that you can up away from the mat. Squeeze the heels in super close to each other, maybe even try to make them touch and keep lifting your chest. On the exhale, release, press back to child's pose. Walk the hands over towards the right side. Enjoy the little twist and reach there. And then walk the hands across the center on over to the second side. Bring it back to the middle. Come up to all fours, but then go down onto the forearms. Forearm plank, you can keep your hands apart or interlace the hands to make things a little bit easier to sustain. Forearm plank. Try it on the toes to begin with, and know that your knees are always there to set down or lift back up. Squeeze the glutes, lengthen your tailbone. And try looking a little forward past the hands. We're holding forearm plank here for several rounds of breath. Slow exhale out through the mouth on each exhale. Can you find a calmness in the stabilizing and in the work? You're here for five, four, three, two, one. Set the knees down, climb back up to the hands, down dog. And then right away, step the right foot forward into your lunge. Hands to the inside of the foot, spin the back heel down. Press the feet down and away from one another evenly. And walk the hands out for down dog lunge. Walk either towards that front left corner of your mat or more over to the long left edge. We've got that, uh, what I'll call muddy play of strength and a lot of plank holds. And then on the other end, back bends, opening, expansion. Walk the hands back in. Make your way to downward facing dog. And then step the left foot forward. Bring the hands to the inside. Spend the back heel down. And walk the hands out towards the right top corner or the long edge of the mat. In terms of body focus or pose focus throughout the month of October, there will be more leaning towards back bends or back extension, if you will. And in that same sense, as we go into our triple B throughout the month, a sense of working strength within the opening of the upper body. All right, walk the hands back in, step it back to plank. Downward facing dog, and then walk your hands backwards to your feet. Hands to the waist, point your elbows to the sky, stand all the way up. Interlace the hands again, flip the palms, lift high, press through your thumb and your first finger a lot.
Flip the hands around so that you use your pointer fingers straight up to the sky. And then take a crescent lean. Lean your hands to the right, your hips to the left. Back into the center. Lean it on over to the second side. As you do that, squeeze your glutes, press down through your feet. And then come back to your center. Part the hands, but keep them up and overhead. Step your right foot forward to a high lunge. Step your left foot forward to a squat, or I'm sorry, chair pose. And then keep your left foot forward and step your right foot back into high lunge. This is kind of like a dance, forward and back. We're going to step our left foot all the way to the back end of the mat. Again, chair pose, Uttkatasana. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of this. You get a few more chances. Stand all the way up. Step your left foot forward to high lunge. And then Uttkatasana, chair pose. Step the right foot forward. Keep the right foot where it is. Step the left foot back, high lunge. And then that good shove back. And maybe it takes a few steps to come to the back of the mat. You'll want to try it one more time. Arms up the entire time if you can. Right foot forward. Left foot forward. Right foot back. Left foot back. Woo! And then left foot forward, right foot forward, left foot back, and right foot back. Exhale, forward fold. Fun little change up there. Walk your hands out to downward facing dog. Come forward to plank, lie flat down onto the belly, send your arms forward, palms together, lift everything that you can up away from the mat. Ooh, that's hard to breathe, superhero, but lift and try. And then release and press back to child's pose. To downward facing dog. Right leg high up into the air, three-legged dog. Step it all the way forward to your lunge. Come upright in the torso, arms to the sky. Moving at a quick clip here, reach the hands to the right, that crescent lunge. And then hinge forward a bit and take it into a twist, left elbow to the outside of the right thigh and twisted lunge. Look down at your right foot. Guess what? We're stepping forward. Stay in the twist and add Utkadasana, chair pose with the twist. Untwist and the arms up to the sky. Stand up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back to plank. Lower down to the mat. Cobra, pick up the chest. Downward facing dog, hips all the way up and back. Second side, lift the left leg high, three-legged dog. Step it all the way through. Come up to high lunge. Palms together. Reach over towards the left side. So first long side body stretch. And then we hinge a little forward to get that stretch more into the right side of the back. Add a little more depth in the twist, right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Twisted lunge. Twisted chair pose, step the right foot forward. Stay in the bend of the knee, the sit of the thigh as much as we can. This time as you untwist, interlace the hands behind your back. Lift the arms up towards the sky. Send your head more towards your thighs, not your shins, but towards your thighs. So a little round of the back like cat. 
Release the hands, stand all the way up, reach the arms high, high, high. Place the right foot against the left leg in tree pose. Point the knee out to the side, the toes down to the floor. If you used a helping hand, then take the hand back up. Relax the shoulders, relax the face. Stay here for another breath. It's okay if you fall. It's okay if we need to try again. Second side, lower the right leg down. Place the left foot against the right thigh. On your second side here, again, take the arms back up to the sky. Nicely done. Two arms down, two legs down. A little bit of a shake. Face the long side edge of your mat. Make your fingertips touch, bend your knees. Step or jump wide. And then fingertips touch, bend your knees, and step or jump back together. It's a yoga jumping jack. We're gonna do it a couple of times. Fingertips together, bend the knees, jump or step wide. Bend the knees, jump or step together. Keep going. You can find your own pace here, your own rhythm, even if that rhythm is a little off and funky. Mine is this morning. Doing our best. Jump out. Yep, jump in. Do it one more time. Jump out and jump in. Let's take it out and stay out. Turn the right toes out. Bend the right knee, warrior two. Something we're all a little more familiar with, right? Broaden the knee towards the pinky toe side of the foot. Press back into the left leg. Keep your shoulders lined up right over the line of the hip. Okay, keeping our body open to the side, take your left hand onto your left thigh and your right hand behind your head. And then point your right elbow up to the sky by leaning back, extending the spine. This is the first really big standing back bend here. I'm using a lot of weight onto the back left hand onto the thigh to give some support and kind of push and pull back. Shoulders, chest still pretty open towards the side of the mat. So it's more in a side bend as well, which I think makes this more doable. Okay, and then we're going to take it to elbow to knee. Top arm flat down, palm down overhead, extended side angle. Look down at your right foot, place the hands on either side and step to plank. And here's where one of those plank holds comes to play. Squeeze in the glutes, lengthen the tailbone, tone the abdomen, look more forward than down. Always try to put pressure more on the thumb and first finger rather than on the back of the wrist. Arms as straight as possible. Always the option for toes or knees. You know all the things. Sometimes just the talking helps, right? You're still with us. We've got this together. We're here for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it forward. Step the feet up to the hands. Slowly roll up to standing. Take a nice wide stance on your yoga mat again. We've done enough jumping jacks. Let's go right into warrior two. Turn the left toes out, bend the left knee. Gaze out over the front fingertips. Uh, 
Okay, and then it's right hand that comes to the right thigh, and I'm pressing in hard so that I've got some stability there. And left hand behind the head, not trying to turn towards the front, keeping it open to the side. Lift your left elbow up to the sky by moving your spine, by taking the spine up and back into spinal extension. One more breath here. And find side angle pose, elbow to the knee, top arm, palm down overhead. And I always like this higher end, but of course you could take the fingertips down to the floor as well if you're looking for that extra bit of stretch, especially on the inner thigh of the front leg. Okay, here's one more plank hold. This one's extra fun. Look at your left foot, step it back. You're in regular plank hold. I give you this option, you stay with it. Kind of like what we do with southpaw on the hands. Try to come to the front of the feet, so point your toes. This is the direction that your feet are in for up dog, but you're holding high plank. It's an ankle doozy, good stretch here in the ankles. Might be hard to do, but if it's safe for you, great, especially for runners or cyclers. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Lower it flat down to the mat. Push back to child's pose. Twisted child's pose. Take the right arm under the left. Extract the right hand. Take the left arm under the right. Extract the left hand to go back to downward facing dog. Look towards your hand, step or jump to the front end of the mat. Inhale, half lift, nice long extension in the spine. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Stand up, reach both arms to the sky. Okay, now take the hands behind the head. Interlace with the fingers like you do when, uh, you know, you're preparing for a crunch. But hug the elbows in around the head. Now a standing back bend, really press down through the feet. Perhaps take the feet a little bit wider apart so you've got some room to play in. I also like to bend the knees slightly. The outer picture never looks like a ton of work, but I think this one's really hard and challenging. Point the elbows more up towards the sky so that the curl and the lift, the extension that you're doing is over the highest part of your shoulder blades that you can find. So it's really Upper, upper, back, working into the extension here. Hands holding behind the head so that it doesn't come into the neck. And then come back to neutral. Keep the hands, but flare the elbows more out to the side. Right foot stays forward. Step the left foot back into your high lunge. Spin the left heel down to the mat, so your warrior one in the legs. Warrior one with the hips and torso mostly facing the front. And then again, hug the elbows more in around the head and take the extension, lift the elbows more up to the sky. Now with the legs spread apart here, you might get a little bit more ease in taking a different shape of the head. Elbows more up, up, up. If you feel this settling into the low back, you have gone too far. <sighs> a 
come back to neutral, give it a moment, release the hands and step forward. Take the hands again behind the head, do the same steps, elbows hug in. Again, I think a little bend in the knees is helpful. It keeps more space in the low back. Hamstrings don't automatically take over. And then little back bend here, standing back bend. Neutral position. If you start to get the least bit lightheaded, come back to a neutral spine, try to stay with it, even crouch down into a squat if it's still happening. Left foot forward, right foot back. Spin the back heel down. Warrior one. And add the back bend. Press through the front big toe, press through the back outer heel with that grounding. Where does it take you? Neutral spine, slowly take the hands down, step to plank, lower down to the mat, and actually flip over onto your back. Lie onto your back here. Hands up, feet up. Lift your head and shoulders off of the mat, trying to make the fingers come closer to touch the toes. Lower the right leg a couple of inches above the ground and lean to the left. Your left uh, back wants to stay on the ground. Try to pick the uh, shoulder blade up off of the ground. It's hard. And then come back to the center, losing my words a little bit with all of the work that it takes. Left leg down, lean to the right. And again, the right shoulder blade wants to just lay onto the ground and say, yes, I'll help you. But try to lift it up. Come back to the center. Switch to the first side. Center, second side. Center, first side, center, second side. And both hands, both legs up, up, up. Hug your knees into your chest. Oh, at least two breaths there. If you'd like to stay longer, you can. When you're ready, flip it back over to all fours and to downward facing dog. Okay, much like forearm plank, forearm dog, which is dolphin pose. Right forearm goes down, left forearm goes down, hips stay up and back. You can look forward at the hands or back to your toes. I'll give you the choice. Of course, you have the choice. Try to keep your head up above the ground the whole time, so press down a lot into your forearms. Keep lifting your hips high towards the sky. And then walk it back up to full down dog. Place the right hand, push, left hand, full down dog. Stay with a regular down dog or give this one a try. Bend your knees a little bit. Press through the hands for a really big back extension. And does that give you enough room to set the forehead down onto the mat? Down dog with forehead down. I can do it if I have a lot of bend in my knees. I can't when my legs are straight. We're gonna play with that throughout the month. One thing to do is simply place a block between your forehead and the mat to bring those two things together. 
but it's about working this full extension and length, whether your head is down or up. Give it a go for five, four, three, two, one, and then walk your hands back to your feet. Take a little crouch, heels up, bend your knees, sit back towards your heels. So it's a squat with heels up here. Squat with heels up, place your palms flat. Okay, this is another tricky one for me. I'm gonna try to keep as much of this shape, but with the heels down. So as you press the heels down, you're probably gonna lift your seat somewhat, maybe a lot more, but try to keep the hands flat, squeeze the inner thighs, inner knees, inner ankles together as you stay here and try looking forward rather than down. Some of you might be able to do that quite well. It's about the flexion in our ankles to some degree, but also how our knees and hips are treating us in the moment. And then walk it back out to downward facing dog. And step the right foot forward into your low lunge. Both hands to the inside of the foot. Heel toe the right foot out. Spin the toe knee hip out. 30 degrees, set the left knee down. Twisted monkey. It's a left quad stretch. Pull your left heel in towards your seat. Spin the right arm around to catch hold of your foot. And that twisted monkey lunge, pull the back heel in and in to exaggerate the quad stretch. Slow release of the back leg. Switch sides for that twisted monkey lunge. So you kind of choose how you want to get there. Left foot forward, right foot back, hands to the inside. Heel toe the front foot to the side. Right knee down, pull the heel in. Reach up and around. I never don't imagine that I'm drawing a rainbow across the sky as I reach for the back foot. Somehow it always gets it more in reach. It's a little trick to opening the shoulder and chest. All right, then as you release, go back to downward facing dog. You'll know there's a little more to where that squat came from, right? So walk your hands back to your feet. You're in that heel up squat again with your feet, uh, your hands flat on the mat. Press your heels flat. Again, it's going to lift your butt a little bit higher. Take some bend out of that knee. And then this time you're trying to stay but with only the left foot on the ground. So you're crossing the right ankle over the left thigh, that figure four shape, and trying to sit as low into it as you can so that the hands ugh, are flat against the mat with your left foot flat against the mat. Big hip opener. If that's working for you, crawl your hands a little further out. Lean your right leg onto a shelf of your arms and pick the left foot up off of the mat. Flying pigeon pose, send your left leg back into the sky. It all has to walk out into that heel up squat to start with. Heels down, but higher, flat hands, flat feet. Take it step by step. Here, to get the left ankle on top, I definitely come up to fingertips. I come out of the pose, if you will, to make the 
cross leg, and then I try to dig back into it. Sitting all of this tight and close together. Sometimes it's just anatomy of limb lengths that make it work for folks or not. Trying here in your figure four shape. Left leg crossed over the right thigh. Flat hands, flat foot. Staying there or going for that crazy arm balance of flying pigeon. And walk the hands out a little bit to give you the opportunity to lift the right leg up and maybe fly it back. It all comes out to that heel up squat. I'm happy that one's over, yeah? Standing forward, fold, straighten out the legs, let the head relax and hang. Bring the hands to the waist, point the elbows to the sky, press down into the feet, come all the way up to standing. Walk to the front of the mat. I hope you're seeing that little bit of yin and yang, and I just mean working power with softness together. To me, what makes Back bends and extensions work is to open up, be more vulnerable, let yourself be seen, lift the arms here into that full power of softness, yeah? Lift, lift, lift. Chair pose, Utkatasana, bend the knees, sit into your thighs. Palms together, add the twist. We've already been here. Left elbow to the outside of your right knee. I'm gonna like scooch, scooch my feet over to the left edge of my yoga mat so that there's room on the right side of me to try to lay the hands down. So staying in some form of the squat, feel free to watch this. I'm placing the hands down. I've got that heel up position that we just came from to try flying pigeon. And now you're trying turned crow pose or crane pose. If the legs are up, try to extend them forward and back. And then the feet come back down. You unwind, stand it up, shake it out, oh my goodness, and go back to chair pose. And then second direction, right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Walk your feet over to the edge so that you still have some mat to work with. Remember, be imperfect. It's about the trying. It's about asking yourself to just see what happens. Show up the biggest way for you. Place the hands down in that twist. And maybe feeling this groundedness is where you just need to stay. Maybe trying the lift of the legs. Maybe trying to split the legs. Walk your way out of it. Stand back up. Find the front of your mat. <sighs> Hands out wide by your side. I've really taken to finding this large stance on the mat a few times. Just like, yeah, I'm here fully in this. Smile, laugh, cry, all of the things, they can happen. <sighs> Lift both arms up to the sky, exhale, forward fold, and do downward facing dog. Forward to plank pose, lie down flat onto your mat. 
cobra, press into the hands, peel the chest up. Again, you need power in the legs, you need a squeeze in the glutes, you need a press of power in the hands, but a sense of release. Exhale out the breath as you stay in that back extension. Hold yourself, your light, your dark, and lower it all the way back down. Press back to child's pose. Tuck your toes. Now, much like child's pose, but with the knees off of the ground, garland squat. So we're gonna lift the knees up. Take the weight more back towards the heels, but stay upper body reaching forward like you do in child's pose. Now in garland squat, if you can make the inner edges of your feet touch and your heels touch down to the ground, go for it. My heels don't touch, but yours might. And then the option to try one more arm balance today. You're here, you're staying, you're sticking with it. Or take the hands in closer until you've got that shelf of the upper arm bones to fly feet up in crane pose. Bakasana. Pick your battle for five, four, three, two, one. And then walk your way, crawl your way to downward facing dog. Lift the right leg into the sky, three-legged dog. Ah. Step it all the way forward to your lunge. Lower the back knee down, hands to the waist, lift your torso. Okay, so before we squeeze the elbows in around the face, now you're going to squeeze them back towards each other. And then again, extension, lift up. So I'm squeezing in, doing a little bit of hug around my outer hips, upper crest of the pelvis to draw it down, which gives more room to lengthen and lift in the spine. Slow call back to neutral. It's always where I get a little dizzy and I just need a little moment. Take as long as you need before you go to the second side. Left foot forward. Right foot back, back knee down. Don't worry, we'll get to that three-legged dog in just a second on the side. Hands to the waist. You choose. Do the same hug of the elbows here or take the arms up. Lower the hands down, three-legged dog, left leg, all the way up and back. Lower the left leg down, come to your knees, cat and cow. How nice does that feel? And I ask that in a way to say, make sure this one feels good. Move in any way that you need. Is it with more stillness? Is it with more fluidity? Is it adding a circular motion, a sway? Feel good here. All right, with the knees on the floor, take them a little bit closer together. Take your thumbs to that crease in between the knee and the calf and try to relax out the calf muscle. You do that on both sides, kind of iron it down and back, if you will, and try to sit on the floor in between your feet. If your butt goes down to the floor, cool. If you need to keep the hands down to hold some resistance away, Cool. Other options are to sit on a block, 
sit back on your heels, or to stay kneeling. Hero pose. Come out of your hero pose, stretch your legs back for plank. Lie down onto the belly, flip over onto the back. Boat pose. So onto your butt, I should say. You're still upright for boat pose. Have your feet off the ground. Extend your arms. And try different variations. Legs straight with the help of the hands. Legs straight with arms off. One leg at a time. Play with it. Remembering that core connection, lie down onto your back now. And just breathe. The best abdominal work we can do is really connect in with the breath, especially diaphragmatic breath, so right underneath your low ribs giving that expansion and release. We'll take that sense of big breath into our full back bend, Urdhva Dhanurasana, wheel pose, upward facing bow, all sorts of names for it. Take your hands by your ears, by your shoulders, and they're in that south paw direction. Elbows straight up to the sky like we've practiced, not out to the sides. And then just think bridge pose, lift your hips up. Now we're using the strength we've cultivated to press into our hands, but mostly into our feet. So our body weight shifts more towards the feet to make this doable to lift the upper body up and set your head down onto the mat. If your head's down, squeeze your elbows so that you can see them in your peripheral vision. And then I like to lift my heels up. Just like in the squat, it gives you a little bit more control and ease to get the lift. Press through the hands, transfer weight into the legs to get the heels back down. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Set your head back onto the mat and safely all the way down. That big release of legs and arms out to your side. Imperfectly whole, yeah? We're gonna try one more version of that, friends. Go soles of the feet to your ground. I'm gonna give you a couple of options. Bridge pose, let's all start there. Hands brush the heels, lift your hips up. Stay and work here. Hands in that south paw direction by your shoulders. Work here. Come to the top of your head and work there. So progressive stages. Go back up to that full inverted pose. One more ask. This is more challenging. Top of the head back down. Inverted staff. Take your hands behind your head. You're on your forearms. So like dolphin, but upside down. Interlace the hands behind your head. You're looking at your elbows here in inverted staff like we did a little earlier standing. And then you've got to get your hands back out of there. Safely enough lift. And we all come down to the mat. Hug your knees into your chest.
an hour of joyful, honest, courageous, imperfect work. Rock side to side. Let's cool down. Sole the left foot on the ground. Stretch your right leg straight up to the sky. Hold where you'd like to feel a stretch. It's going to be a month, right? Set the right foot down, stretch the left leg. And how we greet ourselves, the stories that we have about ourselves in these postures, drives a lot of the practice. I love the sequence this month because it gives me both what I've traditionally felt good about on the yoga mat, arm balances, strength work, and what I've traditionally felt bad about, my back bends, the extensions, where I have to be a little more open and vulnerable. Oh, not so good at that. It melds them together. See what comes out of it. Soles of both feet on the mat. Try butterfly pose here. Soles of the feet together, knees out to the side, bound to angle. That can be a little hard after those back bends if it is too much for you. Take knees together and feet out. So either one of those, which one is more comforting at the moment? Knees in or knees out? Feet in or feet out? Take the hands out to a T. Bend at the elbows, goal post. And then everybody, feet as wide as the mat, knees as open as the feet. Like windshield wipers, let your feet go side to side. Your knees, I should say, go side to side. Try that figure four shape here. Cross your right ankle over the left thigh. Point the knee out to the side. A little easier when we're not having to do all the extra balance. Pull the left thigh in. You can hold underneath the thigh or on top of the left shin. Set the sole of the left foot down, right foot down. And then second side, left ankle over the right thigh. Pull the right knee in. And set the soles of both feet back down on the mat. Take in two, three, four breaths. Notice what you need. And then do the next thing that you need. Is it one more posture? Is it two more postures? Is it to just lie flat? Close your eyes.
Do your next right thing. If you're lying back, you're resting and need more time there, please stay. As you're ready, come back to a seated position. And bring the palms together, thumbs to the sternum and Anjali Mudra. I hope through the practices today and this month, we can keep shining the light to be a bit more vulnerable, a bit more open. Take rest and do hard things. All right. Imperfect this month, imperfect always. Let's close in the sound of Om. Sing along, listen, tune it out. Empty out the breath. Take a deep breath in. Ah, deep gratitude to each of you within yourself, each other, and for this practice. Namaste. Mm-hmm.